Hello and welcome back, fellow Vuperians, to the Powder Toy. So today I've got something to show you guys. It's not a new thing to the mod, it's something I've made with the mod. Because, you know, the testing organism was getting a little bit old. So I made a human! It's it's not the best looking, I'm, I'm not an artist, but I will show you it functions. And there's some cool stuff to it. Also, because the blood and stuff has been giving me a little bit of trouble, I did go ahead and uh, use some portals to make this work. Hope you don't mind, but that that's just how it be. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get the health of everything up a bit as well, because again, this stuff doesn't save yet. Oh, it's so bright and happy. Alright, so let's talk about this. Uh, yeah, the health being 300 is kind of wacky. That makes everything really damn bright. That's alright. As he slowly dies, it'll fix itself. So, we have a lot of blood passing through him. We have two blood streams going through each leg. And we have a bloodstream going through the arms. As you can see, we've got a blood vessel here which pulls the blood back up through the arm. And back down where it can hit the lungs again. There's two lungs, there's no heart, this is just using gravity and portals to work. There is skin on him and he even has a brain made up of neurons which are being fed by a major artery here. And his head has a portal that puts blood out here which gets sucked through the head. It's just, it's not perfect, but I think it's pretty good. As you can see, there's also white blood cells in here that are doing their very best to defend the body. So, this is my biological human. It, it took a little bit of work to get working. It was a little bit prettier initially. Once I add bones and stuff, this will be great candidates for bones. Uh, yes, you heard me right, bones. There, there's a lot of plans, a lot of plans in the works. But let's go ahead and look at this design, look at what we can do with it, and have a little bit of fun. So, uh, first things first, let's look at fire! If I hit it with some heat, you will notice that, as expected, it does damage to that layer of skin. Now, it does heal, because the skin is per- <sighs> Looking at it like that's really cool. This is- this is kind of a nice layering. You can see all the biology going on. The blood vessel, the skin, the meat underneath. Ah, oh, so much goodness. So, some of the skin did die in that uh, burn, but you'll notice that the skin did a very good job of protecting uh, the actual muscle and meat within, and the skin is trying its best to rebuild and regrow after it. Very painful third degree burns, but he ain't dead. Not by a long shot. Actually, this body is pretty damn resilient. I can show that. Uh, let's go ahead and set off not... Not a, not a, not a big old bomb, but if we hit it with a, uh, normal bomb, like, boom! He is bleeding, but you'll notice that the skin is trying to heal, and while it can't fix it completely, we can go ahead and get a bandage on there, and he's going to survive. It's not like the worm. I mean, there is actually, uh, he can lose an entire limb, and as long as we, uh, clot it properly. Now some of you have been asking for clotting systems. Oh, the wax is actually uh, melting. Interesting. Uh, some of you have been asking for clotting systems. The only issue is that gaps inside of him like this would also clot. So I have to come up with a creative way. Um, a creative way for it to clot. Perhaps I will make the blood let out heat so the body will be warm and if it if something comes to the outside and cools down a certain amount, it'll clot. Who knows? I'll try to come up with something. I know some of you are very excited for that prospect. But as you can see, even just putting his arm, going ahead and bandaging it up, he's still doing fine. Um, he is a very resilient dude. Uh, one thing that will give him a little bit of trouble is if we go ahead and get some bacteria, give him an infection. But he does have white blood cells flowing throughout him, so even if I put it into a pretty pretty nasty area like his neck, you're going to notice that the bacteria aren't really going to gain a foothold. They're going to be killed rather quickly. There's just a lot of white blood cells in there battling it out. 
Although we are we are getting some spread. I'm seeing yeah. Here's here's some of the bacteria in the arms. If you get enough bacteria in there, it will cause a little bit of trouble. And you can tell the amount of white blood cells is increasing as well because they have uh they have detected an invader, so they're they're multiplying. They're trying their best. I have improved those uh, systems a little bit. But it would appear that most of the infection, or almost all of the infection, has been dealt with, leading to a little bit of plaque being left behind in the blood vessels. We're going to add the ability for uh, white blood cells to help out with that in the future. And the additional white blood cells are causing a little bit uh, more trouble with circulation because the white blood cells do use a lot of energy. But overall, he's doing absolutely fine. He is still alive after that infection. There are parts where an infection be can be quite bad. So for example, if we put an infection inside of his head, uh, we're going to see the results from this. I mean, it's very quickly doing damage to the tissue. And oh god! Ooh! That was kind of like a cyst that popped. That was kind of nasty. That was kind of gross. Oh man, part of his brain has been liquefied as well by the virus. He's still alive though. Not dead yet. There are enough white blood cells coming through here though that it's having trouble actually making any real progress. And the bacteria uh, is also getting to the point where it's it kind of blocked itself off. It can't reach anything now. Because all the tissue in the area is dead. Dead tissue can be a good insulator against the bacteria. The bacteria really needs to get into a bloodstream to have a uh, chance of survival. So if we put it like here, where it actually has a, uh, a little chance of getting in. Oh. Nope, oh, his immune system! Those white blood cells are doing a good job still. It is, uh, and look, the skin growing back. He is a pretty functional human being. But let's go ahead and go hard mode. Let's do a lung infection. The lungs are somewhere that, you know, you don't really want uh, to put white blood cells and stuff into because that would clog up the lungs and cause trouble and they're super high in oxygen and resources so the bacteria have an easy time in there not much of an enemy and it's able to spread and ooh it is doing quite a bit of damage to the lung as you can see and now it's starting to come out of the lung and into the bloodstream um, this is allowing the blood and white blood cells to get into the lung but obviously quite a bit of damage has been done uh, oxygen is leaking into the body. That's not intended, but we'll fix fix that by just removing the clone there. Uh oh. Now there's now there's a very odd mix going on. Um, with the with the lung being heavily damaged, now it's getting some blood inside. It's it's not good. There are gases inside of the body where there shouldn't be. Uh. This is, oh god, and the damage from it, the infection inside of this artery here is really putting up a fight. And it is causing quite a bit of damage. Look at all of those dead cells filling that all up. Oh, the white blood cells are failing to stop this and now it's getting to the other side of the body. It looks like the bacteria may be killed. But the damage done by it is still pretty damn extreme. I mean, that is... That is an issue. Uh, the lung being heavily damaged is one thing, but... All of this being clogged up is going to make it very hard for resources to get across. And while the meat will try to diffuse the oxygen along itself, uh, that's not going to last for too long. We have a little bit more of a clog over here. I don't know what's going on over here in the head area, but it's not looking the best. Circulation has definitely slowed down a bit, and the blood passing through the body, as you can see, it's kind of blue. It's not that reddish color we want. 
It actually looks like we're getting no blood through uh, flow through the legs anymore. Which is very bad. I don't I don't actually know where this uh, blood is going. It's getting to here. Going through here. I think it's honestly just welling up over Oh, it's going through this portal. But it's not enough. The groin portal. Uh-oh. Yeah, things aren't looking very good. They aren't quite as bright because tissue is beginning to die. Oh, uh, this is a this is a bad situation. Now, it can be fixed rather easily. I mean, if you were a doctor, we got to we got to drain out the pus and damage. Uh We'll drain it through the foot. Doesn't sound very comfortable, but hey, it's what we got. We don't have much else of an option. All right, we're gonna drain as much of that dead tissue as we possibly can. Which is going to allow the blood to start moving, and then once the blood starts coming out, we're gonna stop it, we're gonna redirect it, and we're gonna try to unclog this as much as physically possible. All right, so now we're getting some blood flow, um, at least through that side. Let's do the same thing over here. Let's open the foot up. Some guides here for the dead tissue to go through. And then once it's no longer dead tissue, we stop, block it off. All right, so that is improvement. This is still clogged, which is an issue, but one thing at a time. Blood is now passing through again and picking up oxygen, but will it be enough? The second lung is still damaged. We can try to repair the lung. Close it up a bit, but I don't think that lung is going to work properly for quite a while. I'm going to open this channel up a little bit more so that the blood flow through. And now we can see that this side of the body is starting to turn pink again and healthy. Uh, ooh. The neurons are barely holding enough. Barely holding it off. He is uh he is having a bad day. This just needs to be cleared out. His hands he's getting some really, really poor circulation through his hands now. All the blood that's coming through here is just so low in oxygen, it's not enough. And honestly, there's so much damage here already. Things are crumbling, crumbling away. E almost died there. He he almost died, but he's still technically alive. Um, I don't know if he could survive another lung infection. Well, let's go ahead and test it out. Let's give his other lung a little infection and see what happens. So, the interesting thing here is that the... <sighs> hmm... The blood is very low. Oh, you can see the, uh, the white blood cells multiplying in response. There's a lot more of them now. But the issue is, there's so little oxygen in the system, in energy, uh, it's going to be very challenging for these white blood cells to put up a fight because they use a lot of energy. And there's so much damage in the body already. Now, this could be, this could be quite bad. Quite bad for the body. Damn, that, that infection is really just continuing. Nothing is stopping it yet. I'm just gonna unclog, unclog his arteries real quick. We even have the infection making it into the brain area a little bit. I saw it pop up there real quick. Uh-oh. Like, the amount of white blood cells is is getting higher and higher, but it's, it's not actually really able to target that lung very well because there's no... Oh! One got in there. Yikes. What a mess. The inner uh, lining of the lungs just dead.
at this point. Just dead. You can let it drain out into the rest of the body, but it's it's not looking good, and here we go. Here's the real battle. A lot of bacteria is going into this artery. The question is if the white blood cells in their reduced state are able to fight it. I mean, there's a lot of dead tissue being- Oh, it's all coming through the head area! Oh, that is not good for the brain. Oh, and it's coming everywhere. Oh boy, I, I think I think the bacteria has won it. The white blood cells are not able to keep up with this. Uh, the limbs are just being absolutely dissolved. So is the head. No, no, the white blood cells have lost at this point. He is, uh... The bacteria are definitely winning. Oh man. What an absolute mess. I need to make it so that bacteria can just straight up eat dead tissue so that it doesn't stack up like that as well. Rather than just multiplying onto it, it should be able to eat it. Oh no! Well, I think this was a good demonstration of what the biology mod is capable of. I think it's very exciting that things are moving along and it's getting more and more advanced as time goes on. I have plans, I want to get bone, bone marrow, I want to add stomach lining, I want to add a nutrient system. There's a lot of stuff I want to get done, but I can only get it done with your support. So make sure to like, subscribe, and let me know in the comments down below what you want to see in the next version, because really, this is, I'm making this for you. Like. My intent is to give you guys what you want to see. I'll program it as well as I can, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Bye! Hello and- wait. No, this is the end. Not the end of the world, but it is certainly the end of this. Thank you for watching! Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed! Let me know in the comments down below what you want to see in the biology mod, or if you want to see me play another game, or if you want to see me... running? I don't know. We can, we can do so many things. I'll see you all next time, folks. Thumbs up. Peace out. Bye-bye.